Uh, welcome into the Cricket Nation cast, episode three, and it's a very special edition, this one. We've got a new backdrop, we've got a new co-host, and we've also got some breaking news, which we will bring to you later in the show. But uh, firstly, I need to go down to Hamilton, um, where there's a new man in the seat today. He's my third host in as many shows. He's New Zealand's all-time leading run scorer. He's the unofficial mayor of Hamilton, Ross Taylor. Welcome in, mate. Willie, very impressive backdrop. I didn't see that in the first two episodes. Mm, no, we've uh, shows you how good the show's going, mate. We've been we've been upgraded here at NZC. I thought David was saying we needed to cut back on funds and, and whatnot, not add you know, add to it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's actually only um, it's only cardboard, mate. So um, it doesn't really matter. I, mu- I must say, what's actually your backdrop there? Um, I would like to say that I drew this during lockdown, but um, no, it's a it's a purchase from the wife uh, during lockdown. Um, mm. The kids are getting ready for school and. Um, you know, this is probably the only quiet place in the house, so uh, hopefully the the viewers don't mind. Well, look, I hope you uh, don't mind me calling you up at late notice. Um, that is a bit of a signature of um, how I like to prepare the guests. Um, yeah, how, how, how have you guys been going down there? We've obviously seen you in the news through the lockdown with uh, winning a few awards, teaching your kids at school. Um, how have you been coming out <laughs> post-lockdown? Um, no, it was, I, I thought the first five or six weeks of a lockdown was really enjoyable. I guess it had been quite a big period um, where we hadn't had much of a break, so it was nice to reconnect with the family and, and just recharge the batteries. But um, as we as we sit now, it's probably a bit, a bit too long for my life. I can't want to get out there and, and play some cricket. Um, but today was the first time I um, hit some balls, so it was nice for um, our, our bowling coach, Shane Jurgensen, to come over the hill from, from the mountain uh, and see a few... A few of the boys, I thought BJ Watling looked pretty sharp. Uh, I think he's been hitting balls all, all the way through lockdown, and um, you might have to get Tim Southey on. I think his, uh, if you can get him and Daniel Vittori with their beards, I've never seen Tim with a beard so so long. So uh, I'm just a plug for for maybe Vittori and, and mm. Southey to come on and, and show us how good their beards really are. Yeah, well, I, I love suggestions for the show, Ross. It shows that you have been watching as well. Um, the guys have actually been running some di- some different facial hair through lockdown. I mean, brother of Henry Nichols also running a bit of a, a full-on one. I don't know if you saw that. Um, you seem to be running a bit down, of a... Are you pop- down to, what, once a month still having a shave? Because it doesn't look, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look like much going there. Yeah, no, no, I've got to be the clean, clean cut image of the, you know, of the, of the cast, mate. Are you running a five o'clock shadow there, or what's the story? Yeah, apologies. Well, wouldn't you only give me two hours to get ready? <laughs> um, you know, I thought we might as well just go with it. But while we're on that subject, um, we, we were talking about you yesterday, Willie. Mackenzie was oh, yeah. running. You came up in the conversation. Mackenzie was like, "Can you remember when we were talking to Willie? Willie said he was twelve years old." Um, <laughs> yeah. She so still remembers that. She still remembers that. So I said, "No, he's fifteen." Mm. <laughs> I'm glad you. Yeah. Oh, you said I was fifteen. Nice. 15, clarified yes. that. Yeah. One of the, um, the older media <laughs> men's going around. I know. Well, I, I do try my best to, to keep the youthful look going. Um, you mentioned so where, the guys. Where are you, Willie? Hey? Are you, whereabouts are you? You you in Crosschurch or you in Auckland? Mm. Been shipped up to Auckland, mate. Um, yeah, back to the mothership, uh, New Zealand cricket. So, yeah, it's um, it's going all right. It's good for hosting podcasts, though. Look at this. Looks like we're in a in an absolute um, studio. Good. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. Hey, you mentioned um, you mentioned the guys there. Obviously, you've been getting back into training. First day hitting the balls um, today. How were you hitting them? You mentioned uh, yeah, it has been a bit of time between drinks. Um. Bit like my golf, best when fresh. I think um, I I didn't think I was too bad. Um, I had my review not not so long ago, and it was nice to work on a few different um, things in your game. But uh, it was just nice to hit balls again. I think um, not only that, just uh, I suppose a, a little bit of throwing, a little bit of catching, and whatnot. Just what you sort of take for granted when you're when you're playing. Um, when you've had such a long break, and I guess it's our winter. Um, just those little little things. Probably as you get a bit older, you get a little bit. Um, wondering how it's going to be, but uh, it wasn't too bad. That's pretty cool to hear you at the age of 36, mate, with all your experience still saying that you're looking to pick up things and learn things and work on things um, as we start to look uh, to a new season, which we're not sure exactly what it's going to look like. How how do you go about preparing for that challenge? Yeah, I guess you just got to be ready when, when things um, come about. Uh, obviously, our tour to Bangladesh has just been called off. Um, so at the moment, it's probably looking... Looking likely to just get ready for our our home domestic summer, but um, no, I think as as David's pointed out, he's pretty confident of us having a, a decent international schedule. 
Um, but if things do pop up, I suppose that's why you do all your fitness and, and all this training that um, that hopefully if something does pop up beforehand, that you know myself and, and the rest of the boys are ready. Mm. How do you reckon that the rest of the guys have gone kind of working back their cricket? Because there'll be guys at different levels, won't there? There'll be ones banging down, down the nets door to have throws and there'll be others who potentially have just enjoyed the break. Yeah, I suppose that's um, that's a good thing. Everyone, everyone is different in this game of cricket and at different stages of their career. Uh, I think Tom Blundo, I heard, was the first uh, to be at the Nets. Uh, sure. So that does not surprise me. Um, but, uh, yeah, and I, apparently Kane's only hitting two balls, two, <laughs> having two hits a, a week, so that's pretty good for Kane. But, um, no. no, we'll just have to have to wait and see. And uh, I'm sure everyone is in the same boat. No, they just want to get out there and, and play games of cricket. But at the same time, uh, I have enjoyed watching some live sport and, and the rugby uh, and, the, and the league on, in the last, you know, last few weeks. Mm, well, and as you mentioned that, I mean, we're, we're only a week away from actually cricket returning uh, internationally. The West Indies taking on England in three tests over there. You'll be tuning into that? Yeah, I think so. I think um, just cricket in general has been, I'm sure not only myself, but all the cricket fans would uh, be missing um, any any side of cricket. And I must admit, I haven't. I have enjoyed watching some of those old games, but um, to get some live and current uh, matches would be be good. And I suppose you know all the eyes of the world will be on um, the West Indies in, in England. And uh, you know England being the home of cricket should be should be fascinating to uh, to watch. And, and this West Indies side, I think, is, is very underrated. And I'm sure their seam bowlers will be be really looking forward to these English conditions. And 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 obviously uh, Ben Stokes, uh, an English. A Kiwi um, to to be the first Kiwi to, to captain England. It should be should be great, and I'm sure um, you know he'll he'll be nervous, but I'm sure he'll bring his attacking uh, flair that he has when he when he bowls and bats. And um, I look forward to seeing how he goes. Mm, and obviously in that series, the West Indies have, have just unveiled they'll be wearing the Black Lives Matter logo on their test shirts. Uh, it's a pretty nice touch, eh? Yeah, I think so, especially with um, what's been going on and over the last few weeks. Um, but no, I'm sure, you know, as we've seen in the Premiership and, and a lot of other sports, um, you know, everyone's been getting in behind them and I'm sure, uh, you know, the, the English team will, will get in behind them as well. Absolutely. And uh, I suppose any chance to, um, you know, create the conversation around racism and open up those areas is a good thing. Right now, it's our time to actually pivot to the live news, hot off the press. It's um, like if we've got a new sting, yeah, like we'll bring him in because it's our former batting coach. He's just taken up the role as Canterbury men's head coach. It's Peter Fulton. Fultz, uh, welcome in, and I suppose congratulations. Yeah, yeah, thanks, mate. Um, glad to be here. Looking forward to it. Jeebus Fultz, he weren't with us long. What's uh, Kane and I break here that early, or...? Uh, no, I don't think you did, Roscoe. I think uh, <laughs> oh, thanks, Kane, Kane, Kane could have broken me. Um, Tom Latham <laughs> could have broken me. BJ Watland could have broken me. Um, yeah, those those would probably be the three main offenders, I think. Um, I, but no, you were. Uh, yeah, no, you, you took it easy I, on me, so I appreciate I, that. I feel I feel much better. But um, but how did you find the transition from uh, obviously being a player and, and to come and. Uh, and be a coach, but not long after, you know, you still played with a, a few of us as well. Um, that was pretty good. I think it was easy to come back into the environment, just knowing how how things operate and, and how all the all the players like things to, I guess, you know, to run and just, you know, it's a pretty relaxed environment. Um, and I think that's been one of the reasons why the team's been able to be successful over the, you know, a period of time, just because people don't get too high when things are going well and they don't get too low when, you know when it when it when it gets tough. So, I think it helped having that you know having that knowledge of the environment. Um, but like I said, I think as a coach, no different to a player. You're still trying to you're trying to learn all the time. And you know you know there were there were some guys who um, you know who are very similar. You know now as to opposed to when I played with them, and there was a few guys who'd probably come out of the shell a bit more, and you know had sort of grown as leaders. So it's been an interesting time. What was it like for you, Roscoe, having uh, Pete, a guy you've, you know, you literally played, I mean, your career's only started about a year or two apart. Um, what was it like for you to have him come in and say, I'm, I'm going to be coaching you batting now, mate? No, I thought it was good. I think that that's why I sort of asked the question because it can be quite difficult to come in and, and coach someone that you've you've played with. Um, but my history with Fultz goes right back to the academy. Uh, Fultz, I don't know how old you were at the academy, Fultz, but um, you know I was only a 19, 20 year old, and Fultz was twenty five. 
I don't probably, I probably looked older than I was. <laughs> but I think, uh, you know, I've known him well and, and he's known my game. And I think, um, you know, I, I learned a lot of faults by him just pushing me in different areas. And, um, you know, obviously it's sad to see him go, but um, I'm just worried about that uh, that patch and whether it um, it's going to come across. I didn't run you out, did I, Fult? You're too fast. No, no, I, I, don't, I, don't think we, no, I don't think we're involved in any runouts, mate. Um, a, I think there was one time, I remember a game at Eden Park against England, second innings where I think you were LB, I think it was probably hitting halfway up middle and you managed to convince me to, to, uh, to, to say that it was a good idea for you to review it, um, which, which probably wasn't, wasn't a great option in hindsight. But um, no, I don't I'm think... Glad I don't, you, I'm yeah. glad you trusted me, though. Yeah, well, exactly, exactly. Is, that, of, is that the game? Put the, onus, put the onus on the players, so that's that's my motto. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't remember that, so it didn't happen. Phil, <laughs> Phil, you've obviously been around Roscoe a lot. How have you seen him develop as a player and as, in a, through a coaching lens, I suppose, these days? What was it like to get to work with, I mean, our greatest ever run scorer? I mean, was that a privilege and, and what, how did you try and approach that? Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely a privilege. I think that's probably the... The part of the job that I enjoyed the most is that you're working with guys who have, you know, scored thousands of runs uh, at international level and have, you know, you know, in, in the case of Ross and, and Kane are going to, and probably Tom Latham as well, are going to end up as probably, you know, our three three batsmen who are going to hold most of the records. Um, so a real privilege to to work with those guys and, um, you know, see them in action and, and watch them go about their work. But I think also as a coach, you've always, always got to be prepared to, I guess, challenge or um, give your thoughts when you need it. And I think, uh, yeah, that's probably one of the things, you know, about Roscoe, he's, you know, you don't get to the, you don't get to, I guess, um, this, his stage of his career without being able to be pretty single-minded and probably pretty stubborn at times because you need that to actually have success. But, you know, still always able to, even at this stage of his career, like I say, to, you know, to, to take some feedback or have that conversation and go away and think about it and, you know, c come back and either say, yep, I, you know, I agree with that or no, I don't, but, you know, here's something else that we can, you know, that, that I want to, that I want to sort of work on. So yeah, it, it makes it easy when, when the guys are like that. And um, yeah, like I say, he's, he's come a long way from when we're at the Academy and, you know, I remember, I remember walking, walking home from a night out on a Saturday night, it's quite late. I'm not sure I can say exactly what time it is, but but uh, I was walking down the street, waiting to get a, trying to get a taxi to take myself home, and I saw this guy sitting on a park bench down Cashel Street, having eating something, and uh, I thought that looks like, that looks like Roscoe. I was like, got a bit closer. I thought that is Roscoe, and uh, yeah, went up to him and said, "Mate, Roscoe, Roscoe, what are you up to?" And he said, "Oh, oh, mate, I was supposed to be staying at Neil Broom was actually in that academy year." who was playing for Canterbury at the time. And he uh, said, I was supposed to be staying at, at Broomie's place. And uh, Broomie had done a runner. I'm not sure what had happened, but he, he, he ditched Roscoe. And uh, Roscoe had two choices. He could either start walking to Lincoln from the middle of the <laughs> which is going to take him about three or four hours, um, or he could sleep on my couch. So, yeah, he slept on the couch and gave him, gave him a lift back out to Lincoln in the morning. And All I remember was... Um, I thought Fultz wanted to tell you what I was eating. I was actually eating some KFC. Um, and when I, I'll never forget sleeping on Fultz's couch. He just, he just got three hundred, and he still had two hundred and ninety odd cans of um, Canterbury Draft um, right wow. by the pullout bed. Um, so that that was that is a true story. I got I got one for you, Fultz. So as a coach, Five, as a coach, uh, CD CD playing Canterbury. Where where are you going to bowl to me, mate? Where, where, oh, are you, where are you going to tell you where are you going to tell you Yeah, well, it's uh, again long time ago, long, long time ago. But I actually <laughs> got Roscoe out one game, oh. uh, Canterbury, Canterbury versus Central Districts at McLean Park, and I, I bowled Strangled a few down the leg side, medium paces. Yeah, uh, sort of a way swinger, just nipped away, took the outside edge, um, straight to the keeper. No, no, it was it was yeah, it was down the leg side. Um, Gareth Hopkins. Yeah. Keeper standing up, so I was obviously bowling pretty quick. Um, yeah, so that's 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 probably out of all. I think I took thirteen first class wickets, and Roscoe's definitely he's the he's the best player on the list. So, um, and then I um, and then two two or three years later, <laughs> bowling off, he's in the one day final. Fulton, yeah. oh, 
yeah. went to no. just nudge it down long on. Mm. Called Jamie Howell, mid wicket. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for coming. Yeah. One all. Not, not the only time in my career I got caught at mid wicket. Uh, made the fatal mistake <laughs> of playing for spin, but. Um, that, no, that, that one that, turned. That one turned. That was, that was a list A game, so that doesn't, that's not the same. It's not first class crew. That doesn't, that doesn't really count, probably. So, mm. uh, yeah, so we're, we're one, all, one. Mm. one all on that front. Along with scouting Ross Taylor, um, Fultz, you mentioned it before, the chance to work with some of the guys in Canary. What, but what was it that really did drive you to, to take up this post? And I suppose, you know, step back from us, mate. Like, you know, what's going on? Well, not an easy decision, obviously, to, to, to leave the leave the team. Um, great bunch of players to work with, support staff, excellent. Um, but I think probably when I started out uh, wanting to get into coaching, I wanted to... I guess I wanted to be a head coach, ideally. Um, it's it's a lot different to being a, a batting coach or a bowling coach. You've, you've got a lot more responsibility and, I guess, uh, more input over decisions that are made. And, um, yeah, it's it probably doesn't sound like it, there's that much difference, but, but there is a lot of difference. So I wanted to be a head coach and try and give that a crack. And, yeah, if you don't – I guess if you don't sort of jump in the deep end and, and – get some experience then it's it's probably going to be quite hard to avoid being pigeonholed as, as a as a batting coach or a, as an assistant coach so that was the main motivation uh, and then once the once the canterbury job came up um yeah, the the chance to to coach i guess a team that i've you know played played my whole career with pretty passionate about um you know that was that was a big draw card and and then i think the last part um, is just the chance to be in Christchurch, stay at home, spend spend more time with my family. Got two young girls, and you know that's not easy being away. All you know, a lot of the time, um, as as all the guys that are involved in international cricket know. But um, yeah, I guess when you put all three of those things into the mix, um, it was a great opportunity and and one that I sort of felt like I couldn't turn down because you never know, you know, if that was going to pop up again in the future. Mm. I suppose it um, speaks volumes as well for the domestic game as well that, you know, people would see the Black Caps batting coach as a, a pretty sought-after role, but that you'd actually seek to to take a head coach role in the domestic scene. I suppose, Roscoe, does, does that speak um, something to, you know, where domestic cricket's at at New Zealand at the moment and I suppose the regard it is held in? Yeah, I think so. And um, I think it just shows with the players who have come into the Black Caps in the last little while how they've had success uh, straight away. I think our competition is definitely underrated and, um, you know, having people like Fultz and, and a few of the other coaches, I think, coming up. And, um, you know, I think there's a new breed of coaching that is coming through. And, and hopefully the, the new generation of cricketers can continue to have success as we had over over the last few years. Mm. And Fultz, now that you're, you know, you're outgoing, mate, I know you've got, still got a month left on your contract. But, you know, what, who were the boys that really got under your skin early doors, you know? Um, and, you know, who did you particularly enjoy and not enjoy working with um, throughout your one-year tenure? Oh, I mean, I think probably Tim Southey's always going to be one of the guys who's, you know, he doesn't mind getting under anyone's skin at the best of time. So, um, but I've, I've always enjoyed that. I, like I said, I remember remember playing when he started in 2008. So um, it makes it a bit easier to, you know, to pop some of the flack that he's, he tries to fly, throw around when you actually, you know, you actually remember what he was like when he came into the team as a 19-year-old. And, you know, he, I mean, he effectively knew nothing. Um and, and he's basically sort of grown up in the team. So he's probably the, uh, yeah, like I said, en enjoy that banter. Um, yeah, as I touched on earlier, I, I don't think my shoulder's going to miss throwing to Kane and, and Tom Latham and BJ. Um, you know, it's it's still in pretty good working order, the old shoulder, but I don't know if it could have, probably couldn't have handled too much more. So, um, yeah, that, that side will be tough. And I think probably even, in the, even on the support staff side of things, um, you know, Gonna miss. I'm gonna miss Jurgo. I'm gonna miss Shane Jurgensen. Like, let's be honest. He's um he's great value. He's always got a he's always got a good story. Um, he's always got something to tell. Whether it's going for a 35 kilometer walk on the, you know, the day after, or the day before a game, or being up till you know two o'clock in the morning with his with his uh, with his young son Remy, who's sort of similar age similar age to my daughter. Um, those are those are the things you miss. Whether it's whether you're a player or a coach, I think it's the it's the it's the people that you um, that you form those relationships that you'll miss. So, yeah, that was the probably the hardest part was knowing that I was going to be giving up, um, you know, giving up that sort of 
um, that, that that part of the job. But um, yeah, I know the team's team's obviously in really good hands. I've been successful for a period period of time, and I'm I'm sure they'll continue that as well. No, absolutely, Vult. So I think uh, yeah, on behalf of me and Roscoe, we're certainly going to miss you, mate. You've still got one month in the contract, so I'm sure we'll see you at the winter camps um, and you can get some more work in that arm from the likes of Kane and BJ, et cetera. But um, thanks for joining the Cricket Nation cast. I know you're an avid watcher and a fan of the show, so <laughs> it's been fantastic to have you on. No, no, yeah, thanks. All the best too, folks, mate. I look forward to uh, playing against you, um, obviously in a different capacity, but uh, CD Canterbury is always a good game, but but all the best, mate, in regards to the family. No, no, thanks a lot, guys. Lo- love being here. Um, yeah, first time... Uh, First time caller of the show, but long time listener. So thanks for having me. <laughs> Love that one endorsement. That was Peter Fulton from the North Canterbury office down there. Uh, yeah, we'll be great deflection when I asked them when I asked them that question, wasn't it? It was a great deflection. Never asked it. Never. I knew I knew he was never going to tell me where they were going to bowl to me. So yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, strangling a man down the leg side is a pretty popular way to get the best bats in the world out. But on a serious note, he he will he will be missed though, wasn't he, Fultz? I mean, as much for what he brought to the team in a technical capacity, but he's also a good team man as well, wasn't he? And, and kind of um, worked in well with the with the culture, etc. Yeah, and uh, probably helps when you've you've been in the environment, like you said. You know, he knew he knew what he was in for when he came in, and um, you know, as you said, Saudi tried to get under his skin straight away, and bang, faults put mm-hmm. him in his place um, straight away. But uh, nah. I wish them all the best. Um, you know, Canterbury are in good hands there, and I'm sure um, you know some of the youngsters, especially the batters, will, will learn a lot of faults uh, in the coming years. Was it ever a little bit weird though? I always used to think for you guys, like because he was literally played with you from. I mean, there's two years apart from when you debuted. You played all the way together, and then all of a sudden he's popped up, but he's actually in the coaching staff. Like, was there any moments where you're like, I can't work out what you're doing here, faults? No, not really. I don't think. I think. Um... You know, I think he, he went straight from a, a player. You know, he's, he was having dinner with the support staff. You know, you knew you knew where you stood and things uh, in, in a good way. But uh, at the same time, I, I mean, I played with Macca as well. So uh, the last you two coaches, all, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's just more an age thing. Um, mm. But uh, no, in saying that, um, you know, it's like anything. Some players go in and, and coach straight away, so it doesn't really matter whether it's a batting, a bowling, or, or a head coach role. Mm, so McMillan, Fulton, both GM batsmen, right-handers, went on to batting coaching. Is batting coaching something that uh, Ross Taylor would m- one day, um, you know, think about, consider, or even do? Um, I think the game of cricket's been pretty good to me, so I've got to give back in some sort of way. Um, in what capacity, um, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, a batting coach, I think I do have um, something to offer uh, obviously, uh, in the years to come, but um, hopefully, I've still got a few more years uh, left of me in terms of um, in batting. But uh, definitely, um, whether it's with CD or, or, or any other teams, um, would love to help out. Mm, and there's always a place for you here on the cricket cast as well, mate, which I'm sure is high in your aspirations. <laughs> um, yeah, just quickly, I mean, you, you do sound just as motivated and, and you're still obviously enjoying your cricket um, at the age of 36 and still plenty to give to the team. And I suppose. Um, you know, it's a it's an ever evolving sort of team, isn't it? The, the modern day international cricket team. So, still plenty there to keep you going. You think? Yeah, I think so. I think if anything, um, COVID has given us um, cricket is something to to think about. Uh, I think it gave me a little bit of a taste of what um, the retired life would be, and uh, I think mm-hmm. I want to play cricket for a bit longer. I think <laughs> yeah. it's pretty yeah. it's pretty good to um, to play cricket for a living and. And represent your country and represent your family and friends and um you know you're a long time retired and and hopefully there's still a few uh a few more miles and these legs left and um you know as i said then whatever happens after that whether it's into coaching or, or other aspects of life um you know hopefully it's a bit more further down the track than, than something's done oh, absolutely well roscoe thanks very much for coming on at short notice um you've got the great backdrop there you've bought uh plenty of uh good chat you've also I think giving a nice insight into Pete Fulton there as well. And I'm, I'm sure it was nice to catch up with the old mate who who he wished well. So, um, yeah, thanks for coming on, mate. Um, and hopefully we'll see you what, at the, the camp in the mountain in a couple of weeks. Yeah, not too not too long until we meet up with the guys. And, uh, well, thanks for having me. And I guess the next story is, is who the next batting coach is going to be. So um, we'll just have to put it out there. I'm sure you'll mm-hmm. be working with, with the media behind the scenes on, I uh, guess, who it's going to be. But I'm sure, uh, you know, 
not only myself but the rest of the guys will be looking forward to seeing um you know who puts their name up in, in the future i actually thought i thought you were going to say the big next question is going to who's going to be the next co-host for the cricket cast but sure yeah people will also be interested in well, the I, coach role. I, as i said yeah. I, I thought Sally with his beard I, make sure that he doesn't shave it off beforehand because it is very <laughs> impressive Mm, absolutely oh well thanks again ross um we'll cut it there we don't have a closed sting still um that was the yeah cricket cast episode three beautiful and we'll cut the broadcast